Please be careful, it's venomous. I wonder what happens if I touch it. Ah! Oof. Ow! Ah! Oh, my arm. Look. Oh my god, guys, my arm looks like this now. That serves me right for touching something venomous. Oof. But what moths will these caterpillars grow into? What species are they anyway? Well, let me show you. It's an awesome species from Mexico, and I'll show you their entire life cycle, in fact. Oh my god, look at this cute moth. Isn't it adorable? Look at how hairy its little body is. And its fuzzy little legs. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard for me to show my fans species of Saturnidae silk moths that they've never heard of. That's because most of my fans are silk moth enthusiasts. That's what we do on this channel. We document the life cycle of silk moths, the Saturnidae. Some people like to call them the emperor moths. And I do a lot of effort to show you unusual species of them. This is one of the unusual species. This comes from Mexico and it is known as a Limero dirfia. Fantastic creature. But what's really crazy about them is their caterpillars. You see, their caterpillars are extremely venomous and painful. It's one of the most painful larvae I've probably touched. Can you believe something so toxic can develop into something so cute? So how do we breed this species? Well, there's a good news. You're watching Moth Cycles, my online web series in which we raise moths together from eggs to adult moths. And in this episode, I'm going to raise this Lemaro Dirfia. Let's start the intro. Hey babe, welcome to my channel again. See these adorable little worms? They're the caterpillars of a very unusual species of silk moth from Mexico with venomous spicy caterpillars. In fact, you probably didn't even realize that this species existed before in the first place if it wasn't for me and my channel. Spicy Mexican is on the menu today. They are the babies of a moth called para of, uh, sorry, Lemaro dirfia hujai. Ay caramba. So let's start a life cycle. I started raising these babies in an acrylic container with a ventilation vent. In just a few days they started eating willow tree. Caterpillars from this genus do seem to live, love willow. Especially the kind of willow with round leaves. This species I believe is called sallow or goat willow. And I believe the scientific name is Salix capraia. Or at least something from this group of willows. Caterpillars of this unusual silk moth species are social and spend time in groups. 
Now at this stage the babies are still harmless, but they will become toxic later. So let's check back when they are about 5 days old. And then I check back on the progress of my caterpillars a few days later. Disclaimer, the moth in this video is Lemarodirfia hughai, but they were sold to me as Lemarodirfia lasucampia, an other species. So forgive me if I use the wrong name sometimes. Only after raising the moths did I found out that somebody had sold me a different species. But by then I had already filmed the video and I cannot re-record it. So keep in mind, Lemarodirfia hughai. Let's see how our cute little Saturnid rarities are doing. Mm, I see lots of uh, poop. And that's a good thing. Oh my god, here they are. Look at that, excellent. Oh, let me get a close up on this one because this is too small. Wow. Look at their little faces. They have really interesting heads. See that? They have these black and white head capsules. And absolutely fascinating group behaviors. Just look at that, it's, it's pretty cool. It really is cool. I have the feeling this could be a very cool species if we succeed in rearing it, it is. If I don't do something stupid, perhaps we will succeed. All right, let's, um, I guess that I got some fresh willow. I should flatten this paper a little bit. There you go. Fresh leaf, it's important. Caterpillars like fresh leaf. It's vital to most species. Because in the wild, they just sit on the living host plant. They don't eat all leaves in the wild. So yeah, proper nutrition. So here are the babies. I already showed you a close-up of them before, I guess. I can't hurt to show you them again. Uh, we don't have that many. But that's also because we, I didn't have a huge amount of eggs. I think I had like 30 eggs. So. So let's hope that uh, this instar number two can make it to instar number three soon. <laughs> and then I check back on the progress of my caterpillars a few days later. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's see how the uh, rare silk moths are doing. Oh yes, they are rare. They are rare. So it's not something people breed very often at all. Oof, the willow leaf has gotten very tough and old. So I'm happy that I was about to replace it. Whoa, they look crazy. Let me get a close-up. We don't have that many of them unfortunately, but I wish I had more. But the small group is doing alright so far. They have unusual head capsules that look like a voodoo mask. Wow, these caterpillars do not mess around. They are armed to the teeth. They have evolved some crazy sharp and venomous spines and if they are touched, they are ready to inject any attacker with a burning painful venom. So we have to be careful with these guys. 
Just gonna upgrade the container to a bigger acrylic container. Of course it has to contain some willow leaf. That's what this rare species likes. Willow leaf. Oh yeah. Look at that. Place the caterpillars inside and eventually they will find their way to the more fresh food I suppose. Whoop. And then I check back on the progress of my caterpillars a few days later. Look at that! Soon they were already ready to shed their skins to the next life stage. Are you excited? I sure am. Let's find out what happens next in their life cycle. So beautiful. Ay caramba people! The procedure here is very repetitive. I leave them alone for a few days and then I check back. Let me show you what I found. Ladies and gentlemen, are you curious about how the Lemaeo Dirfia Lazio Campina, what a name, are doing? Then we shall have to take a look inside by taking the host plant out and the caterpillars, carefully that is. They have a really nasty sting, so be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, today a very short and casual video. This is Bart Coppens and I am raising an unusual and rare Saturnid in captivity. The scientific name is uh, Lemero Dirfia Lacio Campina and these caterpillars are venomous. As their look suggests, these are not caterpillars that you would want to mess with. The spines on their body are venomous and they have group behaviors. Now these are not the only specimens I have. Here if we zoom up, we see more of them. See? There's whole groups of them. This species really likes willow tree and what's really cool about them are their faces. They really kind of look like kiss fans if you understand what I mean. I have to be careful with my fingers, they can sting pretty badly. These were collected in Mexico and I'm studying them in captivity. I just thought that I wanted to share because it's funny and awesome. I've never seen a species with these crazy colors. Yeah, this was just a short and educational video. More coming later if you follow the channel. See ya! Now that is a bunch of evil looking larvae. They remind me of a Roman phalanx. Quite the little villains, aren't they? The caterpillars of this species remain social for a long time. They live and feed together in groups. This social behavior increases their chances of survival and makes their toxic spines more effective when combined into a group. This is why you don't touch random caterpillars, because some species can be painful and harmful.
all right people I think this is a very good result um, I didn't have that many eggs to start with so for me it's important that I don't lose any of the caterpillars that none of them die I mean that's always important uh, if you're breeding moths it's always important that they don't die but if you have a limited amount it's even more important to have a good survival ratio I have to say so far the losses have been minimal and I kind of regret how I only had a small amount of eggs I think how many eggs I think I had like uh, 30 eggs and um, about half of them hatched that's a shame I could have had way more Despite that, they are surviving quite well. They like this environment here, this ac acrylic container. Now, this, this kind of containers, I uh, rarely use them for Saturnids, but I know this species um, kind of like the conditions. This keeps them quite humid, but also ventilated because of like the air holes here. So this is a special container for species who like humidity, high humidity, but not super high. It's hard to explain, but if you put them in like a completely closed plastic box, you will have super high humidity and it can be too much. But in a, like in a cage, there's a lot of ventilation and this container is like a compromise between the ventilation and the humidity and it works perfectly. But I think for the next instar, if they make it to instar number 5, I, that's when I'm going to move them to a bigger home. But so far, so good. Excellent result. A few days later. Soon, I noticed a group of caterpillars had bunched up and stopped moving. This usually indicates that they are about to shed their skins. Yes, even the molting process happens in a group. But even cooler is that after they molt, their appearance changes. Let's see what they look like a few days later. And then I check back on the progress of my caterpillars a few days later. Wow, that's crazy. These are caterpillars not to mess with. Their orange protrusions remind me of flames somehow. If you ever get stung by venomous caterpillars, often antihistamines can relieve the reaction to your body to the venom.
Studying venomous caterpillars is important, even though some people will argue it's a bad idea to raise them. But only if you understand how an animal lives and what an animal eats, how it develops and grows, only then can you control them and conserve them if the species needs management or conservation. This is why I raise and document moths. They deserve to be recorded, photographed and documented in detail, so future generations can benefit from the information and marvel at their beauty. The caterpillars were doing well, but can they make it to moths? Hmm, I guess we'll find out in the next segment when I check back a few days later. Yep, I update the progress every few days. Ladies and gentlemen, our rare and toxic Saturnid babies are growing well. But there's one problem, they keep eating the food constantly, so I have to move them to a new box. This is going to be their new home. What a size difference, isn't it? But um, of course, bigger caterpillars warrant a bigger enclosure. All right, they were going, growing quite well at this point, but there isn't too much progress. So let's take a quick look and quickly move on. Alright folks, let us hope that there are some holes in the container, but uh, let's hope that they're not big enough for the larva to come out. That would be bad. But I think this will contain them nicely. At least at this size. Well, their new house. And then I check back on the progress of my caterpillars a few days later. Once again I noticed a group of caterpillars had bunched up and stopped moving. This usually indicates they are about to shed their skins. If we take a look at them a few days later, we'll notice significant differences in their appearance. Do you like these? Look, they're butterflies. Ooh, very thematic, isn't it? Very festive. <laughs> Oh, this is so silly. I'm sorry, guys. You're here to see insects. So, it's the same. We checked back a few days later, you know. Uh, I don't film them every day. I just update their progress once in a while. Don't give them too much stress. That's bad. But let me show you what happened next. What's up there, my wonderful friends? Are you curious to see how our stingy babies are doing? I sure am. Let's take a look! Oh wow!
and now the larvae are nearly fully grown and they became just as toxic as my WhatsApp chat and Discord server. Did you know I have those? If you want to talk to me in my community, join my WhatsApp or Discord. It's nice. One thing that's interesting about Lemmerodeer via Hoogai is that after DNA barcoding them, several new species were described. But the nominate species remained, of course, and I believe that today we have nominate Lemmerodeer via Hoogai. So the species in this video should be the nominate one. Another species that I haven't documented yet, so I'm quite happy to have an opportunity to raise them. Our dear viewer, let me ask you a question. How many YouTubers are documenting moths on this scale and this level? How many YouTubers have filmed hundreds of life cycles? That's right, it's mostly just me. You need me and I need you. Join my cult! But seriously, I hope everybody can see the value in my work and what makes my channel unique. There is a good chance that without my channel, you wouldn't even have known what the heck Lemmerodirfia is in the first place. But here you are, watching them, observing and learning. In my opinion, promoting species like this also promotes their popularity and indirectly their conservation. And that's my goal. I want to make people care about insects so we can protect them and help the environment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited for our caterpillars seem to be growing really well. Can you see them here? Here's a whole swarm of them on the willow leaf. Can you see it? Wow. That's a cool amount of a Saturnate that people rarely ever breed. And uh, yeah, my breeding method seems to be working for them quite well. I kind of wish I ordered more eggs, to be honest. I don't think we have that many caterpillars. I think we have like 13 of them. Ah, it's not a low, a low amount, but I kind of wish I had more in hindsight, but yeah. You never know in hindsight. The caterpillars were doing well, but can they make it to moths? Hmm. I guess we'll find out in the next segment when I check back a few days later. Yep, I update the progress every few days. Now this is what a properly dangerous and venomous caterpillar looks like. If you see spines like these on a caterpillar it screams, do not touch. I agree with this message. Don't touch them. Unless you're Bart Coppens who is a very silly foolish man who likes to handle things that could be dangerous. But Wow, they're really cool are they not? It kind of reminds me of a related species I raised once, Paradirfia fumosa, the smoky emperor. Also came from Mexico, like this species. They're definitely cousins. If you are enjoying the show, then please keep in mind this episode was a special reward on Patreon. I promised that if we reached the $435 goal, I would make a special episode raising this toxic species from Mexico. And here we are. Patreon is my crowdfunding platform where my fans can buy a subscription. Please know that my YouTube channel is entirely and permanently demonetized by YouTube. I don't make any money from my videos at all, beyond what people donate. If you like what I do and enjoy my videos, consider becoming a member. Only that way can I keep making more videos.
What's up everyone, what's up everyone, this is Bart Coppens, the world's sexiest entomologist with a pretty venomous caterpillar, can you see it? Now this caterpillar has spines and upon touch it will inject a potent venom into my veins and I'm going to test it and see how much it hurts. Disclaimer, don't try this at home. If you don't know what you're doing, you can actually get killed. Some species of caterpillar are actually deadly. Now from my sources, this species here is not deadly. But you never know what happens. Everybody reacts differently to venom. And people who are allergic, for example, can go into anaphylytic shock and die. Therefore, always do this at your own risk. And do as I say, not as I do. It is stupid and silly to risk your health. Anyway, my name is Bart Coppens and I breed several species of caterpillars, including harmless ones, but also including very toxic ones like this one. And sometimes I am curious, how potent is their venom? Well, today we are going to find out. This venomous caterpillar is from Mexico and the scientific name is Lemerodirphia Lasiocampina. I know that's a whole name, it's from the silk moth or emperor moth family, the Saturnidae. And now, let's see, I'm going to take this wrist, my right wrist, my right wrist. I am left-handed so it's best to use my right hand so I can still use my left hand for very fun things that I won't mention on YouTube. No, that's too much. As soon as I press this guy against my skin, it's going to have some sort of effect. Ah, I can feel it. Oof, that stings. Ah, ooey, ah, ouch, ouch, ouch. That was it. Whew. And now we wait for 10 minutes to see the effects. Ah, it actually burns a lot. It's more potent than I would imagine. I've been stung by a lot of caterpillars. This is perhaps one of the most uncomfortable ones so far. Oof, what have I done? Five minutes. Oh man. My arm is starting to swell up and it's still burning. Most of the pain has vanished, but some of it still persists. God. I'm starting to think maybe this was a bad idea. Oh my god. Nine minutes, people. Most of the pain, the sharp pain has gone, but has been replaced by a re really weird warm throbbing sensation. Um, I'm not sure if this was a good idea. My god, these are some potent caterpillars. I am doing this on YouTube because I'm a little bit crazy and don't have much to lose anyways, but seriously don't try this at home. In South America, for example, there are some species of caterpillars. If you touch them, they can actually give you blood clots and internal hemorrhages which can lead to organ failure and death. If you don't know what you are doing, please don't sting yourself with random caterpillars. Most of them will only give you harmless rashes or itching sensations, but you never know because a very tiny percentage of them can be pretty harmful. Okay, I study the species that I use on YouTube extensively, but don't emulate behavior. I will be your guinea pig today to show you the results of these venomous caterpillars, so you don't have to try this at home. <laughs> Dang, that's bad. Don't try this at home, it hurts. Never play with venomous caterpillars if you can't identify the species. Do as I say, not as I do, I guess. Let's wait for this to get even worse while the venom is taking its effects, but I have your attention right now. And because of that, there is something I want to say about caterpillars. I'm very passionate about insects, I'm very passionate about butterflies and moths. Of course, online they get a lot of, well, they get a negative reputation because of things like these. 
people like to focus on the fact that some caterpillars can be harmful to crops, can be harmful to, I don't know, agriculture, but some of them can be venomous or trigger immune responses. Truth is that insects are some of the most important animals on our planet. They are at the very bottom of the food chain. Without caterpillars and moths, many species such as birds and small rodents wouldn't get any food. And these small birds and rodents also sustain bigger predators like owls, birds of prey, and all the way up the food chain to the, up to the apex predators. Insects pollinate the majority of our plants, the majority of our crops, and I don't want insects to get hate online just because some people are looking at a creepy video of venomous caterpillars. Please keep in mind that humanity would be worse off without insects and the way we treat them nowadays and the little incentive that we need to eradicate them is absolutely ridiculous. Most caterpillars are harm harmless if you do not directly touch them and just keep your respectful distance from them. We should be happy that we still have species like this on planet Earth, even if some people don't like them because they are venomous. Trust me, without insects we would experience uh, devastating e ecological collapse. So just throwing that out there. Because I am a little bit concerned sometimes when you show videos like this, showing insects in a scary or negative light, is going to influence the public opinion negatively, and that's not necessary. Insects are wonderful and complex creatures, and we will need more of them, if anything. They pollinate most of our food crops. They sustain the entire ecosystem, anything from large predators all the way to the first level herbivores. Really? Think about it. Insects are the primary food source for many fish, but uh, many birds, many reptiles, many other invertebrates, spiders. And without insects we wouldn't have many other animals as well. Thirty minutes. My arms seem somewhat swollen in the aftermath, but most of the pain and symptoms have vanished. Thankfully, my arm has almost been restored to normal. It still feels a little bit warm and throbbing, I suppose. But um, it's nothing too uncomfortable. You can see that my wrist is a little bit thicker and swollen, but that was a weird but painful experience. I would rate the pain 6 out of 10. It didn't make me extremely uncomfortable and the pain disappears in just a few minutes. But still, it, uh, the initial few seconds were pretty painful. It's like a, f a fiery sensation. It's, it feels very hot on your skin. Kind of like electric shocks or fire even. Like a burn mark. But only for a very short time. I wouldn't recommend anyone doing this. It feels kind of bad. But it was also milder than expected. So the verdict is 6 out of 10. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it's hurt. Yes, it's uncomfortable. But no, it's not the end of the world, thankfully. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. It looks like some of them are crawling on the floor. And crawling on the floor and moss is often a sign of willingness to pupate. Therefore, I am going to collect these larvae, which I think are about to pupate, and place them in a box for 24 hours. And if they actually decide to burrow in the substrate here instead of trying to go after food, then I think it's time for these to pupate finally. We had a good run, so I think this should be ready to form pupa soon. It makes sense. Hmm. I hope I'm right. That would mean a successful ending to this breeding project. I think Mexico has awesome and beautiful nature and I'm going to show you many life cycles of Mexican insects on this channel soon. But before that, let me show you the progress on the caterpillars, several days later. Aha. Aha. Uh -huh. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's official. These are our first five pupa of Lemero Dirfia Lazio Campina. The rest are still caterpillars and are still feeding. But, you know, this is excellent. Great stuff. I'm very happy. So how are the rest of the pupa doing? Well, I buried them in vermiculite. I was going to talk about it, but I didn't have any opportunity because the moths came out faster than I imagined. I actually thought they were going to hibernate, but I assumed wrong. They're already coming out the same year. So... We do have some male and female pupa here, so I'm mostly hoping that soon we'll find a female, of course. To pair with our male. But yeah, it's, it's looking pretty great. Let's hope more moths will come out soon. So the pupa of this species can be hatched in humid vermiculite. Just make sure that they can actually climb up somewhere to inflate the wings. Here's the bad news though. Most of these pupa will hibernate. Although I have observed them making a second generation in some instances, I however was pretty sure mine were going to hibernate. Disclaimer, the moth in this video is Lemaro Dirfia Hugai, but they were sold to me as Lemaro Dirfia Lassucampia, an other species. So forgive me if I use the wrong name sometimes. Only after raising the moths did I found out that somebody had sold me a different species. But by then I had already filmed the video and I cannot re-record it. So keep in mind, Lemaro Dirfia Hugai. During the cold, cold winter outdoors, I kept them on room temperature indoors. Believe it or not, but a whole year has passed during the making of this video. The caterpillars pupated in November 2021, but I only saw the first moths around June 2022. Yeah, that's a massive time skip. Just so you know, I spent tremendous amounts of time on my videos. What looks like a few seconds to you is a year of making video to me. Crows definitely don't like its presence. Ladies and gentlemen, it's moth alert. After almost a year, a year of waiting. Wow, these moths take their time. But we have finally this very unusual, rare and cool silk moth. Let's show you in daylight. On this YouTube channel, we film the life cycles of some unusual moths that you never heard of before. And that includes this weird one. After almost one full year of waiting, the first Lemero Dirfia Lazio Campina have started to come out. It is a pleasant surprise, I wasn't really expecting it. These moths have just one generation a year, or so it seems, and they pretty much always hibernate as pupa, as far as I can tell. It is a really beautiful species, although it's not very particularly colorful, it's mostly just brown. Um, but you don't see many people raising these. So it's just one of those species that's kind of hard to get in the hobby, it's a bit obscure. Let me show you a close up. On this channel I've shown you some of the world's most colorful species of moths. This moth doesn't really fall in that category. Its color is quite plain and cinnamon brownish. But you know what? I study moths because I like their biology and ecology, not just the pretty colors. And to be honest, I think this species is cool anyway. Now this is an unusual silk moth, eh? You don't see many people raising these. I think only no handful of people. Mm -hmm. 
To top it off, they have an adorable face too. They are also very hairy to keep them warm during chilly nights. One thing that's really cool though is their abdomen. They don't show it very much, but their abdomen is bright yellow and red with a wasp over. Guys, in my life I have raised many species of Saturnidae, many species of silk moth, and I intend to keep going. But I must say of all the species I raised, this is definitely one of the more funky looking ones. Check out that weird hairy thorax. So funny. It's funny that caterpillars who are so painful and venomous and evil looking can grow into a moth that is this adorable and hairy and cute. I think that's just... That's just kind of ironic even. Well that's a nice female, but next we're going to need a male specimen. Only then can we have them make babies. Yay! We got ourselves a male today. And that's good news because we also have a female, although she's three days old at this point. I hope she mates though. So the male of uh, Lemero Dirfia Lazio Campina is very beautiful because he has very creamy white stripes. Now I know this is not the most colorful Saturnid in the world. Like on my channel you have super colorful moon moths and emperor moths. And compared to those this Saturnid is a little bit brown. But I think brown can be beautiful too in some instances. Second of all it's not about the color I study Saturnidae on a whole family level no matter how small they are no matter how big or colorful they are I just I want to study this whole family of insects so that's good it's nice to have this life cycle on my channel maybe some more close-ups of the male would be appropriate and then tonight I will introduce him to the female let's hope they mate that would be great, it means that we have another generation. So it is actually a really cute and beautiful species to be honest. Just look at how fluffy this thing is. It's adorable. And it has this epic cinnamon, cinnamon coffee flavor. I mean color, not flavor. But look at it. Look at its little hairs that keep it warm during cold nights. That keep its flight muscles warm. Oops, that's too much zoom. But above all, look at its awesome antennae. So did you know that the antennae of a Saturnid moth can detect a single molecule of pheromone from the female? That's, that's pretty, I think that's, that's pretty much the least amount of odor that an animal could possibly detect. These antennae are very sensitive and they work like a, as a stereo, in a stereoscopic way. 
What's cool is that moths, they can smell the direction that the smell is coming from very well. Kind of like how snakes have a forked tongue, so they can, they can sense where, the, where their prey is. These antennae, I guess there is a, in a similar fashion, the moths can sense which direction the pheromone is coming from to track down a female over a large distance. Yo, and whoops, that's again too much zoom. I need better camera equipment, but there you go. This is beautiful. A really special species from Mexico. And so the male is actually a little bit prettier than the female, for he has some milky white patches on his wings. And he's totally rocking that afro haircut. Not to mention the very cute yellow antennae. Can you believe something so venomous and painful transformed into something seemingly so harmless? So now that we have a male and female, I like to use the wingspan board. The wingspan board is honestly just uh, a cutting board that people uh, use that craft a lot. But the squares, they show the size of the moss very well, so this is how you can see the scale. I think that's useful to have, and I like to do that in moth cycles. So here we have the male <coughs> with the white stripes, and the female, she's more brown, and she's bigger. I'll show you some close-ups. Oh hey, cool! A male and a female close together. Now you can see the difference in shape and size between the male and female. The male is smaller and it's clear when you place them so close together, isn't it? The females of silk moths do tend to be larger and heavier than the males. Being heavier makes it more difficult to fly. So the males do most of the flying. They are smaller, faster and more agile. It's their job to find the females. Both sexes are very hairy and they stay warm during the colder nights because of their hairy furry coat. Aren't they unusual silk moths? Yep, that's why you gotta watch my channel. Bart Coppens, why do your moths have such gorgeous asses? Is one of the most frequently asked questions on my channel. If you don't believe me, I'm going to make this moth twerk like a freak. And I'm going to do it simply by poking it. Let's see what happens. Oh, did you see that? Simply by poking this moth, it has revealed it's rather colorful looking bum. Now some of you may see, say that these yellow and black stripes may kind of resemble a wasp. Well, that's kind of the point. This moth is bluffing and trying to intimidate me with its ass. What's really cool about the males of this species is that when they are poked, they will raise their wings up and reveal their abdomen. 
Why do they do it? It scares away their enemies. Really? Believe me or not. As you can see, their butt has black and yellow stripes. Black and yellow are associated with dangerous animals. Just think of wasps or certain snakes. So by showing off their ass, more or less, they can intimidate attackers. And they aren't even the only silk moth species that do it. Let me show you some other species that can, that I filmed myself. Here's a Paradirphia morula, a new species to science. I have filmed this life cycle too on this channel, and they have bright red, black and yellow abdomens, and an incredible threat pose. Or how about Dirphiopsis delta? This is actually a very small species of silk moth from South America, but it also has a bright red and yellow abdomen. When it's touched, it does the same threat pose. Or how about Chirodirphia vagans, another silk moth that I have filmed myself. And another species that when touched, lifts up its wings to reveal a quite colorful abdomen beneath it. Or how about the seamill of Chirodirphia rhodesa cordis, I had the pleasure of filming recently. Well, you probably get the point now. I just needed the excuse to show up of my Dirfia Fornax as well. As you can see, I love this particular group of silk moths. I do wonder if shaking my butt has such an intimidating effect too. What's really fascinating is the fact that a lot of these species are simply bluffing. At least all the moths that I've shown you so far in this video are presumably non-toxic and pretty much harmless. That means they are harmless creatures pretending to be poisonous or harmful. But predators have a very good reason to take these warnings seriously. Because there are certain groups of moths that are actually very poisonous to predators and that also use their colorful abdomens or colorful patterns or wings and body in general to discourage or intimidate predators and warn them of the fact that they are unpalatable or even poisonous. This is something known as aposematism. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that to a bird or a predator it is very difficult to tell a poisonous moth apart from a harmless one. And when a predator looks at these moth butts and sees their impressive, bright, voluptuous abdomens, you may imagine why some of them may think twice about actually eating them. That's right. It's both mimicry, but in some cases it is also a legit warning. And that complicates things for predators. This was Bart Coppens with my short video about moth butts. See you in my next upload. I put the male in a cage. Can you see him? He's in here in a medium sized pop up cage for insects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the female. Here's the female. She is still a virgin at this point. Just like most of my subscribers. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't want to make fun of you. Anyway, um, I'm going to introduce this beautiful female here into the cage with the male. Here you go. Uh, and there's a chance that tonight they're going to be mating. Now, unfortunately, tonight, guys, I have to work a night shift. I have to work a night shift tonight. So that means I won't be there to film it. Damn. That's why it sucks that I'm not a full-time YouTuber yet. It's not financially sustainable. If it was, I would be here all day just to, to film the matings and everything that happens at night. But now, there's a chance I, I will miss the mating. 
Anyway, I hope it happens because I would love to raise another generation of this stuff. They're really nice. Not many people know this, but this species is one of those species that can tolerate cooler nights. So even though this species is from the warm and subtropical Mexico, and I am in the cold, cold Netherlands, I'm going to leave them outdoors in my garden. I think there is a chance that tonight they are going to pair. I think so. I think that could happen. So yeah, let's leave them outdoors. Despite working as an entomologist, sometimes I still have to do side jobs to earn extra money. And this summer I had to work a lot of night shifts in a warehouse. And because of that, there's a little bit of a time skip here. I wasn't able to film the moth constantly, but when I came back from work, after being occupied for several days, let me show you what I found. Hello! Another male has come out last night. As you can see, it's a beauty. I do love their yellow abdomen. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Very beautiful. Very pretty. This is why you're watching the channel of Bart Coppens. The most popular moth breeder on the internet. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I am. I am the most popular moth breeder on the internet. That's, that's a good thing to be able to say. Like, damn, I'm on top. So, it's a really nice species and a new male has come out. Now, I have no idea if the male and the female have paired last night. Let's check on, upon them as well. It seems that the female has laid some eggs. It could be a good sign, but I'm not exactly sure. I wasn't here to observe it. I had to work, so I couldn't see if my moths were actually mating. As you can see, I managed to raise about eight individuals. It's not terribly much, but it certainly is something. Raising these was quite fun. The moths are definitely more innocent than the caterpillars. What species shall we breed next, guys? I think I'll breed with your mother. Ha 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 ha. Okay, just kidding, that wasn't even funny. It's subtle, but they do vary in color. Notice how this one is more cinnamon red, while the others were more brown. Variation. Ladies and gentlemen, if I look very tired, it's because I had to work a night shift. Since recently I've been doing night shifts in a warehouse. Ugh. It's a terrible job. It's very hard. I have to basically drag heavy containers that are being unloaded with trucks from, from about 1 o'clock until 9 in the morning. It's very heavy duty work, I suppose. Physical labor, but I have to do it because um, this YouTube channel is still not enough to, justif to justify doing YouTube full-time. I still need part-time jobs like that to pay for the bills. But my day has become a little bit better because we have another new meal and that just makes me happier. Moths, they make my difficult days uh, a little bit less difficult. So let's take a look at our insects and our rare little Saturnid that uh, not many people have ever raised. So. Do you guys like this species? Let me know in the comments. What species should I breed next? Very cute. Oh my god, it is so cute. Look at that. It's colorful, plushy, hairy body. It's yellow antennae. It's hairy legs, it's adorable! Just look at this awesome moth, dude. Wow.
Now one thing that we noticed is that uh, our female has spilled the beans, so to speak. What that means is the female has laid the majority of all her eggs. Now I wonder if they are fertile and if she has mated. Unfortunately, because I had to work night shifts in her warehouse, I was not here to see it happen, unfortunately. So I don't really know if she's fertile or not. Now she was in the cage with two males for two days, so you expect them to mate. But it's never a guarantee with Saturnid moths. They can, they're peculiar about mating. Sometimes you get some individuals who just refuse to mate. I'm gonna use a petri dish. I'm gonna collect the eggs. The good news is if you breed this species, you can see if the eggs are fertile because they should develop like a, a black dot. So if that happens, we'll know. One thing that I notice is females of this species can lay a lot of eggs. Like all the eggs in this container were, were laid by this single female right here. Now moths can lay a lot of eggs in general, this is nothing new. But this is a lot of eggs for just one female, like how many of them are there? This must definitely be over a hundred eggs. That's actually great. I'm really hoping that they're fertile. That would be great. I would love to raise this species again for next year. It's a beautiful, beautiful silk moth. And the larvae are very nice with their stingers. Even if they're really painful, I like them. So that's great, isn't it? Now people, I don't know what was up with that, I had to sneeze. <laughs> now people, eggs from the paradis, seriously? Are we done? Yes, we are done, I think. Now people, Eggs from the Lemerodirfia or Paradirfia group. Oh no. <coughs> Stop. Oh, that's embarrassing. Ugh. Are we done? Yes? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Eggs from the Paradirfia, Lemerodirfia and Dirfia groups of Saturnids usually take a long time to hatch. Oh, please. What's wrong with my brain? So usually these uh, things, uh, you have to put them on room temperature and it may take up to four to six weeks for them to hatch. That's longer than most Saturnids, so if you breed the species, don't throw away the eggs after two weeks because they seem infertile. It can take a long time with these Saturnids. And that's normal, it's natural. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we didn't raise that many, I think we raised like eight pupa. We have four moths out, so this is already half of our moths. We had a, re this is Moth Cycles episode, we have a really modest number of insects, like it's not a huge amount. I didn't have so many eggs to begin with. I think I started with like 30 eggs. And from that we raised about 8 pupa. It's, it's not like a super great survival rate, but it's acceptable. And clearly it was enough to breed them anyway. So that's good. Let's check back what happens in a few days. And then of course we check back several days later on our Mexican moths. Well guys, here is the status update of the day. The female has practically died, like... There's not much life in her left. After laying all her eggs, she has pretty much passed away. Well, this may sound very unfortunate, this is rather normal for silk moths to pass away after laying their eggs. So let's see if she's 
alive if we poke her now. She really seems to be dead, like... Yeah, she's dead. Rest in peace, beautiful female. Thank you for reproducing. Thank you for giving us life. Now, after that, it does seem that I have uh, four males. I don't trust this male here because he seems to be active. I hope he doesn't fly. These males are practically single. So it would be nice if we had another female that we could pair with these um, males. You know, we raised a small amount of pupa, so the odds are against us in this case. But I think we have some pupa left and it would be great if among that there were more females, you know, just to have another mating, that would be fine. That would be fine. It is a really nice species though. Not many people like to breed this species because they are brown. People like big colorful stuff instead, like moon moths and atlas moth, not these small brown things, but I think they are fascinating. I'm gonna have to close their enclosure though because they are starting to become active and I don't want any of them to escape. Looks like we were successful with yet another strange pieces of silk moth. But I'm not satisfied. I will keep making YouTube videos until I film the life cycle of all the cool species. That's right, I'm determined to make hundreds of episodes of moth cycles. And all I need is your views. All I have to do is wait and see if the eggs hatch eventually. And then the life cycle will be completed. Amazing. Let's check back on the eggs and see if they are fertile. Ladies and gentlemen, a long, 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 long time later it has finally happened. My Lemerodirphia eggs are hatching. Wanna take a look? Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement. Well, actually several announcements because first of all, most of my Lemerodirphia eggs have vanished. Remember all those eggs I collected? Most of them vanished. But how and why? That's because behind the scenes I have been trading these eggs for eggs of new species of moths that I'm going to breed. Not many people know this, but behind the scenes I do trade cocoons and eggs of moth species with other breeders of insects. That's how I get so many of my exclusive species that I show on YouTube. I have a lot of rare silk moth species that no one else is able to obtain. Because I exchange the eggs and pupa of my species for those of other species in return. So most of my eggs have vanished, I traded them away. If you're interested in that, usually I do it behind the scenes, not in public with my YouTube audience. But consider subscribing to my Patreon. Um, I am more inclined to trade with people who help me sponsor my channel and my content and my work. And that's because I have so many viewers, I have so many subscribers. I literally get hundreds of messages every month of people asking me for eggs and cocoons of this species. And the demand is so high because let's be honest, I'm popular online. That sounds arrogant, right? Calling yourself popular. Oh, that's arrogant. Let's be honest, it's true. I am popular online and a lot of people ask me for eggs and cocoons. 
And there's more people who want eggs than there than I have eggs, honestly. There's I would not be able to provide everyone with uh, the material. So I'm I choose to limit it to the people who help me sponsor my channel. But that's not the point. Um, I did keep some eggs for myself. I always do that. Why? Why do you keep some eggs for myself? Well, sometimes people have trouble hatching the eggs and they send me an email like, Hey Bart, where are the eggs infertile? Was the pairing failed? I was like, hmm, I have control eggs here. So if somebody else's eggs don't hatch, then I can say, well, mine are fertile. See, here's the evidence. I kept some for myself. Mine are hatching, mine are fertile. So if your eggs are not hatching, it means you did something wrong, right? Clever move. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you, the eggs are hatching, the babies are coming out, and I wanted to show you. And here we see some baby caterpillars of Lemaeroderfia coming out of their eggs. It's taken them a while, but yet here we are. You see that? Oh my gosh. So tiny. So pretty, so cute. So there's not that many caterpillars yet. But slowly more and more are coming out. So that's really good news. Clearly these eggs are fertile. See, so these are the two first baby caterpillars. Hello? Now, not all the eggs have hatched. We have like um, three or four baby caterpillars. But it looks like we're going to have dozens more soon. But I feel like this is where I'm going to finish the breeding part of the video. Because we completed the life cycle, didn't we? We started with eggs. We grew the caterpillars into moths. We paired the moths. The most laid eggs, and now here is generation number two. I could show you the same life cycle again, but that would be kind of boring. I'm gonna breed new species and work on new episodes in the future. Yeah, but this was Paradirfia Hugai. So I hope you enjoyed it. Another life cycle completed on my YouTube channel. I'm very happy. There are so many life cycles you can see on my channel. I'm gonna keep making more of them. Oh yeah. Rest in peace guys, the moths are now dead. But your spirit lives on in the next generation. Thanks guys, who, anyone who is watching right now, totally appreciate it. I put so much effort, so much hour in these kind of videos. Like, it's, I know it sounds dumb and silly, like I'm a person who literally films the life cycles of moths. What a weird silly thing is that if you think about it. There's a reason not many people are doing it, because it's just so... How many people are interested in the life cycles of moths, you know? It's like, dang, it's so obscure. That's the end. Well, the babies are finally hatching, but I don't have the time to wait for all of them. So now it's time to talk about the biology of the species, and as usual for moth cycles. The Merodirfia hugai is a species that is found in Mexico and Guatemala. In Mexico it is recorded in Veracruz, Puebla, Chiapas, and in Guatemala it was recorded in Huehuetenango. Hmm, that wasn't easy to pronounce. Could it be a more provinces? Maybe. There doesn't seem to be too much data. The Meriodirfia are quite complex and diverse species and can in some cases be quite difficult to identify. New species are also being discovered on a constant basis. Thus far the genus seems to be limited to southern Mexico and northern Guatemala. Typical for most species is the yellow abdomen, light brown to cinnamon brown colors and males with milky white lines in some cases. Many years ago, they used to be in the genus Paradirfia, but genetically, 
Some researchers deemed them distinct enough to warrant being in their own genus. An interesting fact is that Paralier fiahuchai serves as the new type for the genus. So it seems that we started with the right species if we want to raise and compare more species in the future. This species is often recorded in montane tropical cloud forest, rainforest, but also tropical dodecoous forest. The caterpillars reportedly feed on Plantanus lindiriana, Salix gilensis, Brunus robinia, and surprisingly, one record even mentions Magnolia sridiana. One thing is clear, the caterpillars do feed on multiple types of plants, and thus, the species is expected to be somewhat polyphagous. The fly time of this moth reportedly is around June to July. It also seems that the species can have a partial second generation in October and November. That's all I can say for now, because the information I have about these species is quite limited. If you have any research papers or species descriptions that concern the genus Limerodirvia, please email them to me, I'm collecting them. In fact, it's hard to find much comprehensive information, but hopefully this life cycle has satisfied and educated you a little bit and show you one incredible species of insect you otherwise would not have learned about before. And now I have one important message, the one I usually share at the end of moth cycles. Wow, this is an amazing species of moth, isn't it? This is called the African moon moth, Archema mimosa. What an amazing and beautiful species, just look at it. Look at its little legs, its yellow wings, what an amazing insect! And its tails. You're probably wondering, can Bart Coppens breed the African moon moth? The answer is yes, I know how to breed them. And I also know how to breed many other species as well. And I'm going to prove it by filming all their life cycles on this YouTube channel, so you better subscribe. Because I'm preparing a lot more life cycles of legendary species of moths. Let's put this cutie here on my shoulder. But before we proceed, we have a very special and important message that's important for the future of this channel and my video production. You see, I have one major problem. My YouTube channel is not fit for monetization. My YouTube channel is demonetized. What does it mean to be demonetized? It means that YouTube thinks my content is not suitable for monetization. Big and popular YouTubers, when they upload a video, and that video gets a lot of views, they actually get paid by YouTube themselves. This is in the form of what is called ad revenue. YouTube plays commercials or advertisements on your videos, and when people click on the advertisements, you earn a few cents. I don't. YouTube is not supporting my channel. That means that I don't make any money from YouTube themselves. If I upload a video, I have a disadvantage as a YouTuber. Because YouTube is not paying me for my work. But I found a solution to that. That solution is called crowdfunding. Basically, all the videos that I make and the time it takes me to make them is paid for by my loyal and generous fans, viewers and subscribers. So how does that work? Well, I have a crowdfunding website and it's called Patreon. And on Patreon you can buy a subscription for as little as one dollar a month. But there's also higher tiers and higher tiers of subscription that you can buy. Now, if you buy a subscription on my Patreon, you receive some rewards from me in return, such as merchandise with butterflies and moths on it that I designed myself. That's right. These include stickers, mugs, posters and more. That's because I don't just like taking money from people. I like to give them value in return. You are donating to me and in return I give you something in return and it's merchandise, in the form of t-shirts, posters, cards, and more that I designed myself using my own moth pictures. Let me show you some of the stuff that patrons receive. 
Please do consider becoming a member of my Patreon and in return you will receive Moth merchandise in the form of mugs, stickers and posters. I honestly designed all of them myself and make sure that my sponsors receive gifts in return for helping my channel. Since YouTube is sadly not supporting my channel for unknown reasons, I am dependent on contributions from my own viewers. But you do receive something in return. That's pretty cool, right? But if that didn't convince ya, I have another announcement, you see. On Patreon we have something that's called goals. And if I have enough people who subscribe to my Patreon and we reach a certain monetary goal, such as $400 a month, $500 a month, then what we do is it unlocks special videos, special episodes that I am going to make for you. And this video, this video you watch today, was a reward that was unlocked on my Patreon website. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I promised that if we hit $435, yeah, if we hit the $435 goal on my Patreon, I would film the life cycle of this special and venomous species from Mexico. And we hit the goal. We did it. So this episode was a special reward. Yeah, a special reward that I made. Especially to reward the people who donated to my Patreon because we achieved the goal. And in return, I am making this video for you. Now in the future, there's more rewards that we can unlock. For example, in my continent where I live, it's called Europe. You may have heard of it. In Europe, there is a beautiful species of moth. And this moth is called the Autumn Emperor Moth. Its scientific name is Perisomena kakigena, and it's beautiful. It has yellow and pink colors. And I decided, if we hit the $470 goal on Patreon, I'm going to film his life cycle for you. Just like I did with this episode, as a reward. But, if we hit an even higher tier, $485, I'm going to film the European Small Emperor Moth, Saturnia Pavonia, which is an incredibly beautiful species from Europe that I've always wanted to film the life cycle of. And if we hit $485 on Patreon, I'm going to film his life cycle for you, and you are going to see it on YouTube. Now you may think, Bart, what's all this talk about money? Why are you begging on the internet for donations? Well, I don't see it as begging. You see, I do a lot of work for YouTube already for free. And doing work doesn't automatically entitle me to compensation. I do YouTube for fun. I like talking about insects. It's my passion. It's my fantasy. It's my dream. I love insects. I love butterflies and moths. But it is very inconvenient that I have a YouTube channel that costs so much time and effort to run. Like some of my videos took about a year to film, including this one, the life cycle of the moth from Mexico I showed you today, Lemao de Rifiahujai, took over a year to produce. And the truth is, it's just hard. It's just difficult to keep going, okay? I need to make money from this channel somehow, and YouTube isn't helping me. I don't have sponsors. YouTube is not supporting me. My fans and viewers, you, are the only people that can help me survive and create more videos. And I don't like to bring up that fact at all. It's a bit cringy. It distracts from the video. I don't like having to repeat myself every video, talk about Patreon, but it's how I survive. It's the only way me and my business can grow. And the truth is, the more money I make online, the cooler my videos are going to be. If I have the budget to travel the world, I can show you the rarest butterflies and moths in the world. The coolest and rarest insects. I can. But I need the financial support to do it, otherwise it's simply not possible. It's not sustainable. Otherwise, I would be basically 
I don't, I don't, I can't afford it in the first place. But even if I could, it's weird if you're paying money to entertain people. I'm trying to make it financially sustainable, at least to a point where I break even and get rewarded for all the time and effort I put in it. So if you like my show, if you like what you're seeing right now and you want to see more in the future, consider buying a subscription on my Patreon. But it's also possible to donate via PayPal, Ko-Fi, LiberaPay and more options. Consider it. This message is of course only for the people who are willing and able to support me. I understand if you're not willing to pay a random YouTuber. I understand if you're not able to. The economy is crashing, financially times are hard, the gas prices are skyrocketing, there's inflation. Make sure you take care of yourself financially first before you take care of a YouTuber like me. That's important. I would never ask somebody to support me who can't afford it. But if you can afford it, consider it. In return, you receive a lot of rewards and my gratitude. And of course, we're going to hit those juicy goals, hopefully. When we do, we are going to see special life cycles of special moth species. And yeah. The funny thing is, I posted online that we are very close to hitting this goal on Patreon. We were so close. And then we had one person join my Patreon, his name was Soapy Dragon. And thanks to Soapy Dragon, we managed to hit the goal. So a special shout out to Soapy Dragon. Thank you very much. You were the last patron of mine that helped us finally reach the goal. But of course, I have to thank all my other patrons as well, because you played a role in all of this equally. Last but not least, I would like to say, I unleashed the designer side inside of me. That's right. Is Bart Coppens a designer now? Sort of. I have an online store called Redbubble where people can order t-shirts, postcards, clocks, stickers, pillows, bed sheets, anything you can imagine, laptop cases, mouse mats. And I designed some pretty cool designs for them using my own pictures that I made, my own photographs of moths. Let me show you some of the designs there. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to bring some attention to my Redbubble shop online. Because I personally designed some t-shirts, stickers, mouse mats, blankets, mugs, phone cases and more using my own designs. And if you buy a product, I receive about 20% of the money from the sale. So when you order anything I designed, I receive a small cut, usually about one fifth, that helps my channel. And each of the moths in these designs is one that I personally made and have personally photographed. I made all these pictures. Other moth themed products include iPhone cases, dresses, leggings, laptop cases, artboard prints, shower curtains, clocks, coasters, floor pillows, backpacks, mugs, mouth masks, Pins, pouches, coffee mugs, journals, magnets, postcards, tote bags, mouse pads, and so, so much more. So please do go check it out, people. Maybe you will like some of the things that I have made. And even if you're not searching for any of that stuff, <clears throat> maybe you'll simply enjoy taking a look at all the cute moths I did photograph and used to make my own designs. Go over to Redbubble and see many unique designs. The name of my shop is Entomologist. Now, if you order anything from my Redbubble store, most of the profit is going to Redbubble, but I'm going to get about 20% of the profit from these products. So if you buy a t-shirt, a mouse mat, a sticker or a poster, it's gonna support my channel as well. If that's preferable to you over Patreon, consider it. I made some designs myself. And I'm hoping that people will like them. They are silly stuff like phone cases with moths on them. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. I'll be back soon with a new entomological video about butterflies and moths. As always, I've uploaded thousands of them. I'd also say like to give a special shout out to Jeb Bromfield and Henja Rachmiel. I hope I pronounced your names right. I'm Dutch, I have an accent, but you guys sent me a huge donation on PayPal. 
and it really helped me finish this video which took a lot of time to produce. Thank you guys. I'd also like to give a special shout out to Rob. Rob, the myth, the man, the legend, you may have known him. Some of my past videos, he really sponsored me, he helped me achieve a lot of things. You're watching this, Rob. Thank you. And now I'm going to play the credits, because um, the names of the credits include all my patrons on Patreon. And it's only because of that, that I have the free time to make so many dang videos. Sorry for the begging segment, I hate talking about money, money sucks, money is annoying, but money rules the world. And I need to make things sustainable, so let's pray the credits and see you next time in Moth Cycles. Bye bye.